thanks for joining us at Donington Park, heading off the grid for the opening round of the 2024 Porsche Club Motorsport Championship, which also includes the Porsche Club Motorsport Am Championship for this year all powered by Pirelli. We see the cars making their way around for the first of two races that we've got over the course of this afternoon. And now qualifying took place this morning. That sets the grid for both races that we'll see. Fastest time gives you the grid for this race. Second fastest time gives you the grid for the race later on today. In what are still chilly conditions out there. We've not had a spot of rain all day. It's been largely blue skies with a bit of cloud but um, it is quite chilly out there. Let's give you the grid then for this first race of the 2024 championship season. It is the multiple former champion, uh, Simon Clark, that lines up on the pole position and alongside him is the reigning champion and also multiple former champion, Mark McAleer. Row two of the grid, it's Pete Morris, another multiple former champion, alongside James Cayley, who finished third in the championship last season. Row three of the grid is where we see Jake McAleer, son of Mark, who sits there on the front row of the grid. And alongside him is the number 80 car, which is Bill Cayley, the second member of the Cayley family on the grid. And row four of the grid, that's where we see Ed Hayes and Chris Dyer. Then as we move on to row number five, on the inside of row number five, the overall champion from last year when he was racing in class two, it's number one, Paul Simpson. For company, he's got the 74 car of Jim Bryan. And row six of the grid, it is David Burke and Richard Baston that line up on row number six. The seventh row of the grid, Julian Morris and Pete Evans. And then next up, it's Angus Archer and Darren Lebet who is there on the outside of that eighth row of the grid. Row nine of the grid, it's Shiraz Khan and Brian Richardson with Paul Seagrave and Andrew Porter sitting there on row number 10. And then next up, the final few rows of the grid, Jessica Wilson has Jason Brown for company and Jamie Callender has Cole Hazelton, Cole Hazelton alongside on what will be the 12th row of the grid. It's 40 years since Porsche Club had its first ever race. That was at Snetterton on the 20th of April of 1984 and 40 years later the club is still providing some brilliant racing for Porsche enthusiasts and drivers alike. Looks so like one car has already peeled its way into the pit lane. New regulations for this year so class one is now known as the Porsche Club Motorsport Championship with Pirelli and class two as it used to be known is now known as the Porsche Club Motorsport Am Championship with Pirelli. New for 2004 and that is the way that the grids are split. You can see different colour windscreen headers. It's a dark colour windscreen header for those in the AM Championship. It's a yellow one for those that are in the main uh, club championship. Uh, new cars coming in this year as well. We're starting to see a few Gen 2 cars coming in uh, in the championship. Not many as yet, but they will filter their way through. Is this championship of old? If you think of the man that sits on the outside of the front row of the grid, Mark McAleer. He's won this championship in 968 club sports, in 996 and in 997s. The championship evolves every year as new models are allowed in. Green flag waves then. We're about to get the first 25-minute race of the season underway. Red lights come on now. Simon Clark on the left of your screen sitting there on pole position. Looks as though it's not a bad start from him. Pete Morris gets a little bit of wheel spin on the second row of the grid in the red car with a white stripe down the centre of it. But it's going to be Simon Clark that leads up towards Redgate Corner for the first time. Mark McAleer slots himself through into second place. Pete Morris is there in third. James Cayley is there in fourth place but might get picked off and dropped down to fifth. We've got problems further back. Back. There was a spin by the look of things for one car that's in the process of recovering, which I think was Paul Seagrave. And there was another car that went through the gravel trap and couldn't quite work out who it was before the dust had cleared. Uh, no, still can't work out from there who it was. But I think all of those that had issues at turn number one have all managed to get themselves going is the one good thing, as the race leader is already starting to open up a little bit of a gap. Simon Clark qualified on pole position eight tenths of a second quicker than Mark McAleer in second place and is getting on with it and is disappearing up the road straight away. A mixture of 997s, 996s, uh, Caymans and Boxsters all in this championship nowadays and they're all equated by uh, messing around with the, the power to weight of the car so you know it might have more power but it's a heavier car and therefore the way it delivers a lap time is very similar to a car that doesn't have quite as much power but is a little bit lighter so it does mean that regardless of what model of Porsche you're running you're all fairly much evenly matched it, it may also mean that the heavier cars of course their tyres might just drop off that little bit earlier because the fact that they are heavier on them right lots and lots of smoke suggests that something has happened up at Coppice Corner and I think that is a second spin in the race I think that's one car that had it off in the first corner at Redgate 
And I think, again, may well now be destined for the pit lane at the end of the lap. Not sure if it might be Jamie Callender, possibly. We'll have to work out. Race lead continues at the moment, descending down through the Craner curves. Looks as though Pete Morris has got his hands rather full. That looks like that Jake McAleer that's behind him at the moment. Then it'll be Bill Cayley at the wheel of the green machine with the gold flashes to it. The number nine car is the teammate to Pete Morris, which is... The car of Chris Dyer, another long-time Porsche racer, been part of the Strasa team for a good few number of years now. Carl Hazelton, I think, was the car that had problems on the first lap. He has not come through uh, and has gone into the pit lane instead. And I think the other car that probably had some problems was the number 23 car of Jamie Callender, as I suggested. We've also lost right the way down towards the tail end of the field. I, th I think James Cayley, but I think that's probably a transponder glitch on his car more than anything. Right, so... Pete Morris is having to stick his elbows out. He's still got Jake McAleer right behind him at this stage. There's another good fight going on further back, which is going to be Paul Simpson, who's about to be overtaken by Bill Cayley, who squeezes his way through. So that is Bill Cayley at the wheel of the Cayman going away through and ahead of the similar machine in the hands of Paul Simpson. The 997 still squabbling away, which is Pete Morris, who has now lost out to... Jake McAleer, who's gone through. So down through the Craner curves they'll go. Side by side further down through the order. That is Paul Simpson, who is trying to stick his elbows out to try and see whether he could keep Ed Hayes at bay. But he has lost out to him there. So the light blue car of Ed Hayes having gone through. The 987 Cayman S. Through and ahead. And looking to see whether he can just make a little bit of headway now and pull away from the overall champion from last year say so Paul claimed the class two championship but you tot up the points across both class one and class two last year he was the overall champion last year and having lost one place he's in danger of losing another because he's got Chris Dyer that's right on his coattails as well as they had with 21 and a half minutes to go round through coppice on lap number three Simon Clark pulling away all of the time in the lead of the race he leads by two and a half seconds at the moment from Mark McAleer in second place Pete Morris now no longer in third. He's dropped to fourth as Jake McAleer moves up into third place. Pete Morris trying to keep at bay the aspirations of the number 80 came in, in the hands of Bill Cayley, who's too far away to try anything as they come into the braking area. And there we've got one off, and that's one of the Rint cars as well that's off. Can't quite tell whether that's Andrew Porter's car, whether it's Brian Richardson's car from that angle, but that's a car that's pulled off on the inside of Coppice Corner with some sort of woe. So down through the Craner curves, Pete Morris still working hard to try and keep at bay Bill Cayley. Bill Cayley with a good run coming out of the old hairpin, starting to close right onto the coattails of the 997 that lies ahead. But at the moment, the Cayman can't quite thread its way through. Pete's been hugely successful in Porsche racing over the years, not just in this championship, in others as well. Has claimed overall championships in the past and has been a multiple Class 1 champion. Of 2014, 2015, 2019. Say so he was runner up in the championship last year, and he's having to stick his elbows out here because Bill Cayley is trying to get alongside. He's still too far away, though, as they're coming towards the braking area for the Robert Chicane on this lap. But he's very much nose to tail. Slightly more nimble Cayman, but a bit more power out of the 997. But over the course of the lap, they are pretty much evenly matched, aren't they? Now that they're squabbling, they're dropping ever further away from the cars in first, second, and third place. Keep an eye on that light blue car of Ed Hayes as well as he sits there in sixth place and is looking to try and make some headway. So 997, the Caymans ganging up. Pete Morris has got Bill Cayley right behind him. Ed Hayes is trying to join in and then his teammate might join in as well, which is Chris Dyer. So onto the brakes, in towards the right-hander. And again, this is where the Cayman seems to have the advantage. Mid-corner and corner exit, it seems to have a little bit more light-footedness about it but in a straight line the 997 just seems to have the legs so Pete Morris having to use every trick in the book and he's got plenty of them he's been around long enough racing these cars to know exactly what he needs to do and the point at which he needs to do it and he's doing a good job of keeping Bill Cayley behind could Bill get a better run coming out of the corner no he can't by the look of things and now he needs to be careful because he was in attack mode he might need to go to defense mode here because the light blue number 32 car of Ed Hayes is not that far away so, fourth, fifth, sixth altogether. Watch out for seventh place in the background of the shot, which is the number nine car of Chris Dyer. 
Very similar livery to Pete Morris, which is the Strasa colours, the red with the white stripe down the centre. He's looking to have in on the fun as well. And then they all start to hold each other up. Don't rule out the fact that the reigning champion might close in, close in as well, which is Paul Simpson at the wheel of his Cayman. So onto the top of Hollywood and down through the Craner curves. Pete Morris still leading this little batch of cars for fourth position. Still with the Caymans all starting to gang up on him at this stage. Out front, Simon Clark is just going quicker and quicker and quicker. He leads by nearly three seconds now, and over the course of the last few laps, has just been setting fastest lap after fastest lap. There he goes through Coppice Corner. And that is the number five car, which is Brian Richardson. So couldn't quite tell what the car was at the time. It's the number five car, Brian Richardson, that had the problem. So he has retired that car. And Simon Clark, fastest lap of the race last time through. One minute 14.897 from the race leader. He's a long way up the road from these cars here. They're about nine seconds behind him, Pete Morris and co. So onto the brakes, in towards the right, and then the left flicks at the Robert Chicane. Use all of the kerb that you can, which is the red and white kerb, but don't go onto the, the green painted tarmac. Watch those big tyre stacks as well. So through they come. I'm keeping my eye on that car in the background of the shot just to see whether it's closing in as well. Now, for the lead of the AM category, this is the lead for the AM category at the moment. The number 44 car of Andrew Porter leads the way, but only just at the moment. He's got Angus Archer sitting right behind him. Angus qualified on pole in the AM category. Whereas for Andrew Porter, he didn't quite have the qualifying go to plan that he expected. He was fifth in qualifying in the AM category but is now leading the way and is just about holding his own, isn't he, from Angus Archer. There were six tenths of a second between the pair of them. So you can see their AM category cars because of the black Pirelli windscreen header. It's a yellow Pirelli windscreen header if the cars are running in the main Porsche Club Motorsports Championship with Pirelli. So it used to be called Class C1 and Class C2, but it's the main championship and then the AM category for this year. So up towards the braking area for McLean's corner. Still all of the time, Andrew Porter hanging on to it. Now we might have a shuffle in the order as well. So Bill Cayley was pressurising Pete Morris, but now squeezing his way through comes Ed Hayes. He's still side by side with Bill Cayley. And now Chris Dyer's making it three wide over the start finish line. The three Caymans side by side with each other. Bill Cayley in the green car should have the inside line for Redgate corner, but Chris Dyer picks them both off. Brilliant stuff. So Chris Dyer now is going to be what two places higher up than he was he was seventh at the start of the lap he finishes at fifth at the start of the lap and ed hayes and bill cayley still can't work out as to who now wants to be in sixth and who wants to be in seventh and it's ed hayes for the moment but bill cayley is back in attack mode having just lost a couple of places one to chris dyer and one to ed hayes who want to try and reassert himself back up through the order and that's just allowed now pete morris in the 997 to have a little bit of breathing space so it's 997's first, second, third and fourth at the moment. The best of the Caymans is Chris Dyer, who's now up into fifth position. And the best of the 996s, I think, is Jim Bryan. The number 74 car is down in ninth place at the moment. I think he's the best of the 996s. So down the exhibition straight, in towards the braking area for the Robert chicane. Chris Dyer, then the light blue car in the hands of Ed Hayes, followed by... Bill Cayley. There's a little bit of traffic that will be coming up before too much longer as well. I think Jason Brown is the next car that this group are going to catch. It's the most gold, bronze, crunchy wrapper colored car, isn't it, for want of a better term. The number 56 car will be shortly gobbled up by the front runners. Simon Clark, in the meantime, the race leader, continually just pulls away. He's now 3.7 seconds to the good, give or take the odd thousandth. And for the AM class, the pressure is still building on Andrew Porter because, again, he's got Angus Archer looking one way, looking the other. The order hasn't as yet changed, though. The two boxsters busy squabbling away. Angus Archer takes a nice wide sweep in towards Redgate Corner to try and get a bit more momentum on the exit of it. But Andrew Porter, I'm sure, will be wise to that. And just up the road from them, they don't really want to catch the next car that's just up the road for them. It would be a fight for position, but they don't want to catch the main championship car ahead, which will be, I think, the number 22 car of Pete Evans. So we're fast approaching the halfway point of this race so far. This is the battle of the lead of the 996s in reality. It's not a separate class, but this is for 
bragging rights to be the first of the 996s home. Richard Baston is really looking to turn the screw on Jim Bryan. Looks like there's a little bit of tyre rub on Jim Bryan's car. There's been a, a, a small amount of contact on that left rear corner. You can just see the bumper bent in very slightly on the car. And that's just causing a tiny bit of smoke to come off it. And the two of them are going to be side by side as they come over the start finish line. So Richard Baston draws himself alongside Jim Bryan. There's hardly any daylight between the pair of them as they can up towards Redgate Corner. And in this battle for what is going to be ninth and tenth place, the final two places inside the top ten, it does look as though it is still, by the skin of his teeth, Jim Bryan that's hanging on to it. But that's not for want of trying as far as Richard Baston is concerned. Down through the Craner curves, they're on lap number 10 currently. Dive onto the brakes, try and hook up the apex, get nice and early on the power coming out of the old hairpin because you want to carry that momentum all the way uphill and through the left-hand kink that they're heading now at Schwantz Curve. And then onto the brakes up at McLean's Corner where there's traffic not that far up the road. Now whilst these 996s battle, we've had a new fastest lap of the race last time through and it's gone the way of Jake McAleer in third position. One minute 14.704 from him. We've also got a good fight again for fourth, fifth and sixth place. Pete Morris had been let off the leash a little bit, hadn't he, in fourth place and had broken away from everybody else. But now it's his teammate Chris Dyer in the Cayman that's closed in on him. Followed shortly thereafter by the light blue car of Ed Hayes. The 996s have had a shuffle as well. Richard Baston has finally managed to work his way through and pass Jim Bryan. As they now head onto the top of the Craner curves. Pete Morris in fourth place, trying to see if he can do anything to pull away from his teammate Chris Dyer. The battle for the AM class as well, side by side again, but for Angus Archie, he's on the outside line at Redgate Corner. Andrew Porter is not going to make it easy. So he takes a tighter line in. Angus Archer will try and get the cut back on the way out of the corner. And that's exactly what he's done, which gives him the inside line. And he has the momentum. He goes through to pick up the lead of the AM class. Brilliant driving there. Took him a while to do it. But up to 13th place goes Angus Archer and finally picks up the lead of the AM class, having qualified on pole in the AM class. Lost out in the early stages of the race to that number 44 car there of Andrew Porter, who made really good progress, actually, with the shenanigans at turn number one when the lights went out and cars spinning. Gave him the opportunity to move from what was fifth in the AM class up to the lead of it. Another little fight that we've got going on as well. This is going to be down for 11th and 12th position. It's the number 10 car of Julian Morris. who has got the Dayglow car of Pete Evans right behind him. Pete Morris in the meantime, no relation I believe, is sitting there in fourth place. Chris Dyer, followed by Ed Hayes, and still trying to catch them is the green car with the gold flashes to it in the hands of Bill Cayley. Not quite sure what happened to James Cayley on the first lap, but we never saw anything further of him. So 10 minutes to go. Race leader heads round through Coppice Corner. 12 laps will shortly be completed by Simon Clark, who claimed back-to-back -back championships in 2020, 21 and 22 in the C1 class. He's been fairly untroubled in this race, to be honest. 3.3 seconds is the lead advantage over Mark McAleer, with his son Jake McAleer not too far away. But there's going to be traffic up the road to deal with before too much longer. And for our race leader, should be able to pick off the slower traffic as it heads round through Redgate Corner this time through. All of the cars running Pirelli tyres, but you are limited for the amount of tyres that you can utilise. So for those that run in the main championship class, what used to be class one, you're limited to a set of tyres, one set of tyres every race meeting. So in other words, you get four tyres, but you've got to qualify on them and do two races. If you're running in the AM category in reality, then you get a maximum of one set of tyres every second race meeting. So you've got to see yourself through two full race weekends before you can stick some new Pirelli on. Right, we've had a shuffle as well. So it looks as though Ed Hayes has lost out here to Bill Cayley, who has managed to reignite the fire in his belly and is now up into sixth place at the wheel of number 80 car. And is now already looking to try and set about Chris Dyer and reel him in. He's right with him. So as they head round through McLean's corner, you could see... Bill Cayley's car just sort of moving around a little bit uh, whilst the AM category drivers go wheel to wheel once more. Looks as though Angus Archer's lead in the class may well be short-lived as yet back through goes Andrew Porter. 
So good, vi uh, good dicing and squabbling they've had all the way throughout the race so far. But it's Andrew Porter who is now back into the lead of the AM category. And Angus Archer has got it all to do again by the look of things. He's not going to have the opportunity to try anything as they head up towards McLean's this time through. Coffee's corner is next up and he is almost drawing himself alongside, but he's not going to try anything there going into that double apex right-hander. Get a good exit coming off the corner might be the key and see whether you can do something again heading down the exhibition straight. Now traffic is the thing here now, and that is compromising Ed Hayes. He can't quite get the run through the traffic that he wanted. Met Jessica Wilkinson in the wrong place at the wheel of her boxster. So he's going to have to wait until the exit of the old hairpin before he can finally thread his way through and past the slower traffic. And in fact, at the moment, still hasn't managed to get past Jessica Wilkinson. So that's just taken him a while. So the light blue car has sort of dropped away from those that he was fighting with. Pete Morris, Chris Dyer, Bill Cayley have now all disappeared up the road. Because Ed Hayes couldn't quite effectively get through the traffic there which means he's now got to play catch-up for the next seven minutes and see what he might be able to do. Race leader up towards Redgate Corner. Turning his way through and onto the top of Hollywood. 2.3 seconds is a lead advantage over the McAleer family. Mark from Jake still, father from Sum. They've got traffic to deal with, though, as they descend down through the Craner curves. And that will be dealt with on the approach in towards the old hairpin for Mark McAleer. Jake will have to wait until the exit of the corner before he can thread his way through and past Paul Seagrave's 996. And then once they've dealt with that one, then there's more traffic to deal with, which is going to be one of the boxsters heading up in towards McLean's corner, which stays neatly out of the way. Six and a half minutes remain. Bill Cayley in sixth place. Not quite onto the bumper of Chris Dyer ahead. The light blue car of Ed Hayes has recovered quite well, though. Having lost that time through the traffic, he's almost back up onto terms again with the number 80 of Bill Cayley. Pete Morris has also got a bit more of a gap and some more breathing space again between himself in fourth and his teammate in fifth. So round through Coppice Corner. Still 997s occupying first, second, third and fourth places. Cayman's sitting there in fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth. Then the 996 is there in ninth and tenth place. And then the first of the boxsters that we've got in the order will be those two cars that are fighting over the AM category. Now this is Paul Seagrave. He is fighting away with Shiraz Khan. That will be for position. There is the reigning champion. Now Paul Simpson there will have lost out there. Richard Baston had just, got, Baston had just gone through and ahead of him. So he must have been slow in towards Robert Chicane, the reigning champion. So, yeah, he was in eighth. He's now dropped down into ninth position. You can hear the squeal of tyres. And he's going to have a spin at Redgate Corner. So all may not be well with that car. So it was slow through the previous corner. Half spin at the next corner. And the champion has lost a further place. So down to the bottom of the top ten now he will go. Whilst... Our race leader, Simon Clark, with five minutes to go, is about to complete lap number 16. Still as good as three seconds advantage that he has between himself and Mark McAleer. As he come over the start finish line that time through, that lead advantage is now down to 2.6. It was a slower lap from Simon Clark, and Mark McAleer, by stark contrast, set his best individual lap of the race so far. 1 minute 14.793. So three tenths of a second quicker than the race leader. We've still got the good fight going on as well here. Now that is going to be Pete Evans. So he is there running in 11th position and right behind him that light green car is Julian Morris who has moved up from what was class C2 last year and is now running in the top class this year. Jamie Callender not doing any favours there to Shiraz Khan. Would have been potentially for position as well, actually. They were 17th and 19th respectively as they came over the start finish line, but quite what's happened to Shiraz Khan, I'm not sure there actually. Potentially has lost a couple of places. And losing five places all cannot be well with the number one car. We saw Paul Simpson slow through the Robert Chicane. We saw him have a half spin at Redgate Corner. 
that number one car. Ah, right, no, transponder wasn't working. It was showing he'd lost five places, but all of a sudden he's jumped back up through the order, so it's clearly a transponder issue with his car. As for the lead of the AM class, they're still at it, aren't they? It's still Andrew Porter that leads the way in the wheel at the wheel of the number 44 car. Angus Archer has either been ahead of him or shadowing him continually. It's been a good battle this all the way through the order. And they've still got three minutes to try and sort out who's going to finish on the first step of the AM class podium, who's going to finish on the second step of the AM class podium. Third in the AM category at the moment is Darren Lebet, just to pick up on that. And how far is he behind them? He is about 17 seconds behind this pair. So they have a substantive advantage over the car that potentially is going to complete the AM category podium. So out of office corner, down the straight they will go. In the meantime, Pete Evans trying his very best to work his way alongside Julian Morris, but Julian was having none of it. The two 996s come over the start-finish line nose to tail, and that's going to be for 11th and 12th positions by the look of things. 997, isn't it? Just ahead of the 996. So on to the top of... The Craner curves there will go. We just had a new fastest lap of the race, actually, and we need to go back to the race leader because Mark McAleer, 1 minute 14.666, has closed to within two tenths of a second and has taken up the lead of the race. So Mark McAleer has made it through and ahead of Simon Clark as we were concentrating on that battle. We've had the change for the lead. New fastest lap of the race for Mark McAleer, and all of a sudden he's come alive. Simon Clark looked so comfortable in the lead of the race. Was it a little bit of traffic that compromised him because he had a three second lead? Or is it the tyres that are going off? Or has he got a mechanical issue with the car? We don't know, but we do know he's lost a three-second lead and has lost time. And I also now lost, we know we've lost into the gravel trap Jim Bryan, who had been doing battle, hadn't he, with Richard Baston for the honours of being the first 996 home. So that car stricken in the gravel trap is very much in the firing line. We've only got a minute and 20 seconds to go. So hopefully we'll just get covered by localised yellow flags. Our very brave Donington Park Marshals heading out to chat to the driver and see whether they can give him a shove. But I think the answer will be they'll leave that car there until the end of the race. Now Ed Hayes at the wheel of his light blue Cayman caught up behind Peter Seagrave's car. Mark McAleer heading on to his final lap of the race. And it does look as though the Class C1 champion from last year is on course potentially to pick up the first win of the 2024 championship season in the Porsche Club Motorsport Championship with Pirelli. Simon Clark has led more laps than anybody, but he's not going to lead the important one, which is the final one towards the chequered flag, because Mark McAleer is a second up the road, and the erstwhile race leader is still threading his way through the traffic, that being David Burke's Porsche Cayman, the number 26 car. David, who we've seen out racing. 9.11s in the past in the Porsche Challenge that we had last year and oh great work by the marshals so they've managed to give the shove to Jim Bryan's car which I think is trundling its way back down the pit lane now so good work by them and as that car heads into the pit lane out of coppice with the clock now ticking to zero comes Mark McAleer who is on course for a win in the opening round of the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli so through the Robert Chicane for the final time. The 997 comes over the start-finish line. And for the multiple champion, he's back to winning ways in the very first round of the championship. He claims the win from Simon Clark in second place. And three seconds was the advantage. Simon Clark really did um, drop in terms of pace towards the end of that lap. Who's going to win in Am? We don't know as yet still because they're heading down towards the old hairpin for the final time. Andrew Porter and Angus Archer have both taken the opportunity to lead the Am category at various stages but still can't quite work out as to who's going to stand on the top step of it as everybody else files their way over the start-finish line. Simon Clark second, Jake McAleer third, Pete Morris fourth, Chris Dyer in fifth place and Ed Hayes will complete the top six but who's going to come out? on the top step of the AM category. Well, they're fighting over 12th and 13th overall as they pitch the car in towards Coppice for the final time. Andrew Porter still has his nose ahead of Angus Archer. You can just see them right in the background of the shot where they're nearly running side to side 
heading down the exhibition straight. Angus Archer's just maybe a little bit too far back. And yeah, decides that discretion is a better part of valour heading in towards the Robert Chicane. He's not going to have the momentum on the way out, so it does look as though he might have the momentum on the way out. It's going to be closer than I thought. And is he going to nick it on the line? Because all of a sudden they come through, and he has. According to our timing screen, Angus Archer did it by nearly two tenths of a second in the end. Difficult to tell from that angle as to who it was, but Angus Archer with his hand out of the window suggests that he knew that he had quite just done enough to grab the arm win at the final corner, but the overall win goes the way of that man there, Mark McAleer, hand aloft, delighted with his first win of the 2024 championship season. Uh, could he make it a double later on? Because, of course, these cars will be back out later on today, and we're scheduled to see them back out around about quarter to six this evening if we run to timetable. But for Mark McAleer, he'll be chuffed with that. Let's confirm the results for you then for the first round of the Porsche Club Motorsport with Pirelli. It was Mark McAleer that claimed the win from Simon Clark in second place. And Jake McAleer was there in third place. Pete Morris was fourth, head of Chris Dyer in fifth place. And Ed Hayes completed the top six. Bill Cayley was seventh with Richard Baston there in eighth place. Ninth place went the way of Paul Simpson. And it was Julian Morris in car number 10 that finished in 10th position. Then as we move to 11th place, in 11th place it was a number 22 car, which is Pete Evans. Uh, Angus Archer in 12th place was the first of the Amcar categories home, but what a race-long battle he had with the car that was pipped at the post. Andrew Porter, who finished in 13th position. 14th place was David Burke. 15th place was Darren Labette. Then it was Jamie Callender, who finished in 16th from 23rd on the grid. Paul Seagrave, ahead of Shiraz Khan. And then 19th and 20th were Jessica Wilkinson and the number 74 car, respectively, which was Jim Bryan, who, of course, ended up in the gravel trap, had to be pushed out by the marshals. Uh, then, next up, it was Jason Brown, head of the number five car of Brian Richardson, with Carl Hazelton having problems. Uh, and also, we lost him on the first lap. Don't know where, but the man who was third in the championship, James Cayley, unfortunately, did not score. But of course, uh, the grid is not based on finishing positions from race number one. Uh, race two will be based on their second fastest times from qualifying. And you can join us for that back here at Donington Park, around about quarter to six this evening. So thanks for joining us for race one. Put the kettle on. We'll see you for race two. Goodbye.